What's up wonderful world? So today is a beautiful spring day. It is Sunday and we played a game yesterday so I feel like it's a day off. I'm feeling fresh. I'm feeling excited. I have hardly explored around here so can't wait to do it. Um, I am going to also go to VegFest in Brighton later. So stay tuned for that. But what I thought for this video is that while I'm up there it seems like a pretty calm day. Um, checking out the sights and sounds of Lewis, uh, I could tell you five things that I did that helped change my life, and maybe they could be of use to you too. So, if you're into that, stay tuned, um, because that'll be coming up soon. Also, I need to show you this, because it is adorable. Um, a few, a couple months ago, I did a Q&A on... Twitter with Mersey Royal FC which is an under nine girls team and they asked some awesome questions that I answered in video form and they retweeted them and it was yeah it was really cool to kind of talk to the girls one on one but not be in the same place if you know what I mean and um recently I only just got this because it was sent to Bristol but it's so cute. And it says, thank you, Katie, from Abby, Rachel, Abby, Katie, Lily, Layla, Sophie, and Lily. So thank you so much for that, girls. I really appreciate it, and I'm glad that you got something out of me answering your questions. Anyway, on with the show. For sure, I don't need this. Whew, that's better. Let's go. Actually, you know what? This seems like a pretty good place to tell you. Number one, the first thing I did to help kind of enhance my life, it was a set of things, but the first thing that I did was delete and remove the drama from my life. So I wasn't necessarily caught up in drama myself, but wherever I looked, whether it be on Facebook or in my friends groups or online in any regard, it was just drama, just people complaining or like just not happy with their own circumstances, kind of projecting it on other people and not willing to change within themselves. And it was just constant, all the time. Not that I was interested in it, but sometimes you can't help but look at it. And so, I realized one day that it wasn't serving me in any way. In fact, it was just distracting me and discouraging me from the life that I wanted to live. So, I did a clear out. I took note. I deleted people who I was just friends with because I went to school with them. Um, deleted people that I followed because I was young and it was cool to follow them and I just had a big clear out social media especially but also with people oh, bug, with people in my life um, friends who didn't necessarily want the best for me um, people who yeah were just friends with me to get something out of it themselves or they used me in a way which was, it wasn't a mutual friendship it wasn't a mutual growth but yeah having a clear out of those types of people and that negative energy it really helped me be more clear and more focused about what I wanted to um, <laughs> another one to invite into my life and kind of align with so that was the first thing that I did that started a shift for me, was just clear out all the drama. There's no need for that, um, especially when it's nonsense and, yeah, it's not serving anybody. That's number one.
I'm at a crossroads. Which way to go? That away. So number one led naturally to number two, which was to indulge myself in inspiration. So once I got rid of all that negative energy, the angst, that stuff that just was not serving me, I realized that why not do the opposite and start following and engaging with people who really inspire me. People who are doing things that I hope to one day do or living out their lives with the values that I want to uh, curate inside me, the values that I really stand by, but perhaps I'm not living by. And so that's what I started to do, and predominantly it came online. Now I might be talking to the already converted here, because if you're following me on YouTube there, that's probably something that you already do, right? Maybe you're watching Matt Sheldon and getting tips on how to be a better footballer and then you found me and thought maybe I could help as well. So you're already doing this, um, but you can do it in all aspects of your life. So there are some phenomenal people out there that are sharing their work, sharing their, their life, sharing, um, just sharing things that can be really beneficial to you and what I found was in my life where I was at the moment was that there weren't too many people that were doing things differently um, everybody it was kind of surrounded by the same people for the same number of years doing the same kinds of things and uh, all beautiful loving kind people but it took for me to go to YouTube and Instagram and other forms of social media where I could find these people who made me think, kind of opened my mind. And so by then filling my environment with people who really encouraged and inspired me, helped me then forge that path for myself. So yeah, that was number two. Indulge in inspiration. Oh, look at this beautiful tree. I'm gonna go talk to it. It's true, I can't deny it, I am a tree hugger. <laughs> I love hugging trees. Taking a few deep breaths, even just three, with a beautiful old tree. I know, I feel like it grounds me, it centers me, and I feel good about it, so I'm gonna keep doing it regardless of what anybody says. Um, yeah, here might be a good spot to tell you about number three. Not a good spot, too much wind. Let's try it again, somewhere new. <laughs> Check out that view though. I have to start heading back, which I'm a bit bummed about, but um, I want to get to VegFest while the good stuff's still in stock, so 
heading back now and I'm gonna go meet my coach from when I was a teenager who I haven't seen in about 10 years. He's a bit camera shy so probably won't be on film but I'm so looking forward to seeing him again. So, number three, numero tre, tahiru wa toru in Māori. Māori. Number three. Number three for me was an absolute life changer. Now I'm not going to go into the full story because that's going to come soon because next month it's my fourth year anniversary since I made this change. Um, so I'll do a whole video on it then so stay tuned for that but I went vegan and my life did a 360, 180, backflip, triple dynamic somersault I don't know, my life flipped, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say, and all, mostly all for the better. Um, the hardest thing was the social changes, because um, when you first go vegan, the world becomes a pretty scary place, when you discover all the horrific things that we do to the animals, these little creatures that are harmless, defenseless, innocent and vulnerable and the things that we do to them as humans that we just don't need to so it's a scary place to be in and uh, yeah I'm not gonna say it was all perfect but in terms of um, mentally and emotionally I I felt fantastic I felt like I had lifted this guilt this guilt from this guilt that I had from eating these animals that I loved. I love animals. Why would I ever want to eat them? And I didn't. And I thought that I had to if I wanted to be an athlete. So when I finally realized that I had the choice, that I didn't have to do that anymore, and I could just stop, man, something huge lifted and I felt light and free for potentially the first time and every meal I ate I just I loved it even though I didn't know what I was doing what I was cooking what I needed to eat I just loved the fact that nothing had died for me to eat the meal it made me feel good and as an added bonus this was the craziest thing and I did not expect it because of all that I had been told but 100% I felt so much better so much better. There's people coming. I'm gonna switch off. Oh, it's just a person. It's okay. Um, my recovery. No, I'm gonna do it soon. I can't do it. I went vegan and I got fitter. I got faster. I got stronger, and my recovery was insane. I could train so much more, so much heavier, and I would just be recovered the next day in an instant. So it really allowed me to push myself athletically and become a far better athlete. And I never thought that was going to happen. I thought I'd be depleted, I thought I'd be tired all the time, but it was the exact opposite. So much energy, so much life, so much just enthusiasm to get out and do these things. And my training program just, it was off the chains. I was doing so much. And because I could. And I went from like having a five year stint of just constant injuries to now it's been almost four years and touch wood. Wait, I prefer the live wood. Touch wood. Nothing serious that's kept me out for more than a week of training. Um, absolute life changer much more positive mentality, much clearer mind focus, higher energy levels, way better recovery, and just feeling better ethically. I aligned my morals and my actions. I love animals, therefore I shouldn't eat them. That's pretty simple for me. Um, and I don't want to contribute to any harm or suffering that is not necessary. And learning that it's certainly, certainly not necessary. Um, yeah, changed my life. I would not be here where I am today had I not gone vegan. I'm 100% sure of that. 
97% sure of that. Um, but I wouldn't be able to reach the future heights that I'm confident I'm going to reach if I had not made this lifestyle change. Um, that I'm certain of, absolutely. So that was number three. I went vegan. Whoa. I just came across this, which is an obelisk dedicated to people who burned to death in front of the then star and now town hall of Lewis. Um, in loving memory of the undernamed 17 Protestant martyrs who for their faithful testimony to God's truth were during the reign of Queen Mary burned to death. That's deep. That makes me think that they burn themselves to death or something. 1556. I'm going to look into that. Get back to you. Crazy. Just up on this hill where this golf course is. Hmm. So number four for me <laughs> four. <laughs> um, was that I started seeking spirituality and I was one of those people like I think many are that when you heard the word heard the word spiritual I assumed religion I hope it's not too windy but I grew up and I went to a Catholic school and I adored Jesus my family thought I was going to be a nun at one stage. Um, thankfully, that, that didn't happen. And when I got to intermediate high school, I started really considering about what I thought about the world. And what I think I discovered was that I was atheist, that I didn't believe in God or what my version, the God that I was taught to believe in. Um, but after going vegan, I realized that I had a set of values within me that I found really important and that if I just aligned my life with them, that could be worthwhile. Um, but also I realized that a lot of what I did, how I acted, how I perceived the world was based on conditioning and behaviors that I was taught when I was very young. So without realizing, I developed this kind of, I was seeking spirituality in a way that helped me align with myself and who I am and what I can do for the world. And so, yeah, discovering the beauty and magnificence of life and how special and unique your own perspective and value is. Growth as a human and as a spirit is what I see my spirituality as. I wish everybody could look around them and just see that they are surrounded in beauty and awe. And spending time in nature was definitely a huge part of that for me. Spending time alone, um, figuring myself out was another one. And also again that comes back to indulging in inspiration i look for spiritual inspiration as well i um yeah i found various different kinds of people and eventually the ones that kind of aligned with how i felt about life that i hadn't explored before we are alive and through seeking spirituality that's what i discovered before I was just living, I was programmed, I was just living the life, I was making decisions not based upon what I did, what I wanted, what I felt in my soul, but based on what I thought that society, my parents or whoever, what I thought was the right thing to do. But those were my thoughts based on my previous behaviors and actions and understanding. But once I began to understand myself and who I am, I could make really, really empowered decisions, decisions that I truly believed in. And even though they might not have been the perceived right thing to do at the time, I knew in my heart that 
and I was on the right course and that's what seeking spirituality has done for me and I continue to do it. Um, for me it's, it's personal growth and development and that's what I deem to be spiritual. And that was number four and yeah, real game changer. And finally there's number five. Now number five, I'm not sure whether it came as a result of the other four things or the flip and because of this the other four things came. Perhaps a bit of both. Number five was loving myself and a lot of people cringe at these words, you know, you got to love yourself. And I used to be one of these people, of course. Love myself, like what? How arrogant is that? But I think, especially through the spirituality, discovering that if I'm at my best and catering to my needs, then I can better serve others. And that in the end is what it comes down to for me. And so if I put myself first and do all the things that make me feel alive and whole and enthusiastic and excited to, just excited to live, then that's gonna bounce off me and reflect into other people. If I'm not taking care of myself, if I'm not loving myself, then there's gonna be resentment, there's gonna be fear, there's going to be anxiety, there's going to be um, insecurities that then are going to reflect onto other people and bring that out in them. So the best quote I heard, and I'm not sure where it came from, but it was that looking after and taking care of your needs is not being selfish, but it's being selfful. Because the more full you are with your own love, the more that just spreads to the rest of the world. And yeah, just putting your needs first is super important. And you don't do it in a selfish way. If a friend needs you, you're there. If, but there's nothing wrong with saying no to something because you know in your heart that you're not going to feel good doing it. It might be that you've had a really long long week at work or something and you just need time for, your sp for yourself. You need some space but you've made date a date. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Pardon me. It might be that you've had a really long week at work and a tough time and you just need space for yourself this weekend. But you've made plans. But the selfful thing to do is, I mean, I think a selfish thing to do would be to bail last minute and not really tell your friends what's up. The selfful thing to do would be like, look, really long week, need some time for myself, reconnect with me and who I am. Um, can we catch up at a later date? I think that's how how we care for ourselves. For me, it's before I turn on any devices in the morning and let the outside world in, I have at least 20 minutes to myself. Just to check in, just to breathe, just to be. And uh, when I do these things constantly, when all of my stuff is taken care of, then I can be fully embraced in what I'm doing. Loving myself, knowing my worth, not really caring about what other people think, and just doing the things that I love that bring me joy, that excite me, and hopefully sharing that with other people has been the number five um, thing that really changed my life. That's kind of the progression in which I did them, and I... <sighs> I mean, you can kind of see for yourself what a difference, I mean, you didn't know me back then, but <laughs> I don't know, things, 
things are good. Things are good. So that's five things, five things that I changed in my life to make my experience of life better. Um, it wasn't always easy, but it was definitely worth it. So I encourage you, look into these things. If there's something that you're interested in, that you want to give a go, 100% give it a whirl. Um, and let me know if you find them be beneficial what works for you and what doesn't. Maybe you got something else in your life that you can figure out really helped you along the way. Um, if you do, leave it in the comments. Let's help each other out. Let's, let's start creating the lives that we really want to live because we are in charge of our own destiny. Maybe not our destiny, but we're in charge of our own environments and you can dictate what comes in and uh, what goes out. The law of attraction and all of that. Um, right, I'm going to run back down, quick shower, get changed and head into Brighton for the Veg Fest. See you in Brighton.